The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and I'm so excited to introduce to you to Jocelyn Sidwell Holman. She is a recurring guest on our show, and she's a health coach, a personal trainer, and she prioritizes plant-based foods, but she still eats meat. Her website is levellifestyle.com, and today we are talking about cutting sugar out of your diet. So we are going to be doing a challenge, uh, me Jocelyn and David Wolf, we're going to be doing a 30 day challenge. You're going to hear all about it later in the show, but Jocelyn, welcome. Hey, I'm happy to be back. So let's first start with asking the question, how do we learn and recognize all the different names of sugar? So there's like 56 different names for added sugar. Talk to us about what some of those are. I know some people know some of them, but What are some things that we can list for people to kind of be aware of? Definitely, because it's really intense, you know, when people try to start cutting sugar, understanding what's really going on in their diets with sugars, with even just hidden sugars, additional sugars, because there's also naturally occurring sugars as well. So that's really something to really bring um, awareness to, you know, just basic cane sugar, dried cane syrup. You're going to see fruit juice concentrates and um, just, um, just massive amounts of, you know, processed food. And that one that's been around for a while that has been brought to everybody's attention, that high fructose corn syrup. Um, but even things like molasses, agave, um, brown rice syrup is in tons of granolas. And that's, you know, we're not even going to go down that rabbit hole right yet. Brown sugar, there's, um, you know, there's fructose, there's dextrose. I mean, you keep going anything with that last word, uh, that little os at the end, that basically means sugar. Yeah. And I think people don't realize, I think people know uh, fructose, but yeah, you don't, when you see dextrose yeah. or, you know, that's a big one. Anything ending in the word O-S-E, O-S-E exactly. that's got sugar in it. Yeah. Uh, so let's give listeners some tips. So let's give them the top 10 tips of what you can do to reduce sugar or completely eliminate it out of your diet? Well, one of the main things that I tell a lot of my clients and I practice is to really focus on just the hidden sugars because there's going to be natural occurring sugars because, you know, say for example, blueberries, blueberries have tons of antioxidants, you know, things like that, that you want to still, you're like, okay, this is good for me. But if you're trying to literally just kick sugar Sometimes you even need to, you know, be aware of how much sugar you're taking in and even with fruit. But, you know, the main thing that I think a lot of people are aware of, but still some people have habits with. And the key point that I want to point out that where I think we're trying to develop here for people that are listening and for anybody that joins the challenge is healthy habits that develop long term goals. So let's go ahead and get rid of those sugary beverages So I'm not just talking sodas, diet sodas. I'm talking about those uh, teas and snapples and anything that's in that little convenient container, right? And what's really scary is that when you look sometimes at the serving size, the serving size, there might be four servings in one container. So just because that one, you look at that nutrition label and you're like, oh, it's only 20 grams of sugar. Yeah. First of all, A, only 20, but B, look at the serving size. Sometimes if you drink that whole container, that's up to 80 grams of sugar. It's insane. Um, So really reducing those types of processed foods. So everything from sodas, anything in those containers. And as much as I love juices, really being cautious on the juices as well, too. Um, I think another one really important is buying unsweetened versions of even plant milks, you know, as much as say, let's stop right there. I want to stop with the, the, the sugar sweetened beverages for just, I know that's a whole, that's a whole topic on itself. (laughs) Because first of all, you know, the national Institute of health, which is the fourth largest source of calories says that the fourth largest calories in the American diet comes from soda, which is Mm -hmm. the largest contributor of added sugar. And so a 12 ounce can of soda or Mountain Dew yeah. has 52 grams of sugar, which is yeah. more than a day's worth of sugar that yeah. you, any human should consume. Yeah. And- Men shouldn't have more than 36 grams. Women shouldn't have more than 35. And that's just, that is just set. That's not even a guideline that I like to follow. So that's like, that's <laughs> ultimate. Like you want poor health. 
<laughs> if you want poor health, have that much sugar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So go over those. Sounds a little aggressive, but it's absolutely true. That's not if you want to be, this is like, if you just want to live in poor health, but like, <laughs> this is like the, the guidelines coming. I know from, it um, breaks my heart that people are like, well, if I stick within that guideline, I'm doing okay. It's like, oh, no, but oh. those numbers again. <laughs> yeah. We'll tell them one more time. What were those numbers for the American? Oh, men, um, men. So, uh, you know, the grams is kind of funny that, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't register that in our brains for grams. So men is 36 grams a day. Uh, that breaks down to nine teaspoons, I believe. And then women is 25 grams and that's six teaspoons a day. But if you look at, if you literally were to take six teaspoons and line that up in front of you, you'd be like, I don't need that much sugar a day. Oh, and you'd be surprised. My, my <laughs> husband, surprised. he's going to have a fit when because he, <laughs> when I talk about him on the podcast, he's like, this is your podcast. Talk about you. Don't. Talk about <laughs> yeah, me. I know. I'm going to put this on blast because I'm hoping that he's <laughs> going to change his ways. Yeah. So, I'll try not to talk about my husband either. It's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> He'll be like, that's great. At around <laughs> 7 a.m. He goes to Starbucks and gets Ooh. a venti or even a trenti sometimes a, bit yeah. of one, a latte with, he puts six or seven pumps of their caramel syrup. Oh, that hurt. has in there about 44 grams of sugar. No. He has one at seven before he goes to the gym. Then he goes to the gym and right on the way home, picks up another one. So he's having in a one hour. So at seven o'clock, he picks one up at, and he's having 44 grams of sugar. Then at eight o'clock goes and picks one up and it has another 44 grams. That means 88 <laughs> grams of sugar in a one hour time frame. Yeah. And, and that's by, just, just the morning. Every day. Every <laughs> so day. I guess there's, I guess there's no better time than now because I did bring a visual. Okay. Yes. I brought a visual. So everybody, you know, it's the, it's all the rage and it's always the rage. Every single, you know, time fall starts rolling around. And yes, there's a little bag in here to demonstrate. So I'm not going to name names. I'll kind of cover this up a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to name names to pick on companies. This is about awareness, you guys. So your perfect little pumpkin spice latte, your grande pumpkin spice latte has 50 grams of sugar. And this is what 50 grams of sugar looks like. This is in one, this is in 16 ounces. <laughs> well, like so you said, eight grams of sugar is four tablespoons. That's a quarter cup. That's a quarter cup of sugar that you're, let me get the camera, that you're literally drinking in one, in your breakfast. And that's not even your breakfast. That's just your coffee. <laughs> that's, it's awful. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, so then, Someone might say, okay, fine, I will switch. I'm going to have Diet Coke instead. So let's talk about, you know, turning to artificial sweeteners might seem like the go-to move, but honestly, let's talk about how bad that is for you as well. Oh, that's the one so, thing. Yeah, that's the one thing that not, you know, I know this kind of goes against what we're trying to promote in this challenge, but when it comes to that, and there's a beautiful point that I'll make with this within this challenge. It, it's tough. I get it. But we've been brainwashed to think that if it's a diet, that we're a diet, that it's better for you. And that's absolutely not true because the artificial sugars are way, way worse, in my opinion, than any naturally occurring sugar or as much as I even want to say, yes, a sugar is a sugar, a sugar. But when you take, say, a regular sugar and you deplete it of everything that makes it sweet, you have to add something back in. <laughs> so... That in itself is just an artificial, again, made from a processed plant, not from a plant, right? Not from the ground, not from actual nature. So that's um, something that I do really try to make sure that people- Well, I think we need to clarify because some of them, some of the, you know, sweeteners are worse for you than others. So like- yeah. Well, sweet and low, things, things like that. I mean, ugh. So let's first clarify- you know, when we're talking about sweet and low, like yeah. that to sweet, me, yeah. I agree is like, if you're going to eat sweet and low or some of the stuff that's made in diet Coke with aspartame, yeah. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, you nailed it. Go right ahead. Exactly. It's that's you're setting yourself up for just disaster, not to sound aggressive, but you're setting yourself up for just, oh, I don't want to say failure, but that's the worst thing that you could do. I've told clients this, 
and I can't believe I'm saying it on camera, but I'll tell them I'm an open book when it comes to this. I've told people when they're trying to kick soda, I'd rather you just go ahead and, and just drink a regular soda. If you're really getting to that point that you're trying to kick an actual soda addiction, I want you to get rid of diet and go to a regular soda and let's wean you off of that eventually because it's, it's way worse. It's destroying your body and it's actually destroying your digestion, which sounds even crazier, but those sugar alcohols and everything that's in that is just nothing but pure addiction. And just, it's just, it's fake. You're putting in fake ingredients into your body. Well, I think it's also, there's so many studies out there that show that, you know, those type of things are cancer causing. Right. And so to me, it's about, you know, I think it's just a a matter of, okay, if I'm going to make the decision, it's like, you can train your body to go to unsweetened tea. So like right now I'm drinking a green tea with a hibiscus tea blend. And I love that blend. It has no sugar at all. And I've trained my body to love this. And if I put any sugar in this, I would hate it. And so a lot of times people just say, you just kind of have to go, okay, I'm going to go cold turkey. I'm going to drink it. I'm going to like it. And now my body craves this. Yeah. And I couldn't even dream about putting sugar in. So a lot of it is just getting your head right mentally. Um, Absolutely. Know. It's a, it's a mental challenge also when it comes to any food, but by far, especially sugar, because our bodies, you know, once you start putting sugar in your body, um, basically we have these little neurotransmitters that basically say that tastes good. Give me more of that. That tastes good. Give me more of that. Remember how that felt. Let's do more of that again. So what ends up happening is that you basically just go down that rabbit hole that it's even, it's harder just to kick because the cravings are still there. Once once those cravings are there, that's when it's even more difficult to kick it, but it is possible. And yes, of course, that's why it's a challenge. It takes a little bit of mental, you know, not only clarity, but knowing that you've got the mental capacity to do it because you can, we can do anything. We can do anything our minds are set to. We just have to, have the, you know, have the challenge and put that into play. Yeah. So I would say step one is figure out how to get rid of all aspartame, all, uh, not Splenda, but, uh, the sweet and low, right. Those have to go. Yeah. If you want to transition into products like stevia or monk fruit, that would be a transition for me that those are not as bad as, Uh, the artificial sweeteners like the sweet and low, because those have studies for cancer, higher risk of heart disease and death among women. Yeah. Fatty liver disease. I mean, the body stores sugar basically as fat because it says, okay, this is, I'm supposed to use this as energy. I'm not burning as much energy because I just drank that huge, um, that huge coffee with 50 grams of sugar, but I'm sitting at my desk all day trying to get work done. So I'm going to store that for later because I know I'm going to need that energy. Your body's smart, but when we give it too much of what it needs, it's just going to store it. And it ends up just, unfortunately, like you said, leading to disease and weight gain and just being lethargic. And then of course that beautiful word fatigue, we all wonder why we are crashing middle of the day because of the amount of sugar that we're taking in. And then we go, I have to have more coffee. <laughs> I have to have more sugar. I need to pick me up. Sometimes you, it, sometimes you, that's a mental game that you're allowing yourself to not have that healthy habit and you're allowing yourself to just fall back to an excuse. All right. So number one is that we're going to stop drinking sugar, sweet beverages. Correct. Number two, we're not going to substitute artificially sweetened beverages as replacements. Number three, let's talk about buying unsweetened versions of food. Correct. Um, what are some examples of that? Um, as far as the unsweetened, I mean, you can look at anything from, you know, one of my favorites is looking into, uh, like I said, a lot of those plant-based milks, for example. Um, it should not have any, you know, lactose has naturally occurring sugars. Um, meaning, you know, cow's milk, but plant milk should not, you know, that's the other thing that we really want to pay attention to. And you're like, what's well, vanilla? It's unsweetened. Make sure that there's not, you know, that's when you want to look at those hidden sugars on the label. 
but there's a lot of hidden sugars, even in, you know, plant-based, you know, other ingredients, you know, one of the tried and true things that I love so much because I promote so much plant food, (laughs) but people say to me all the time, like, but it's vegan. So that's better for me, right? That's good. I'm like, but it's still an education to know, to use in the knowledge, to know that you have to flip that over and look at the ingredients label. Right. And that's where a lot of this comes from, you know, making sure that unsweetened, do yourself a favor, flip it over and make sure that you're reading that label properly because you're going to, it's up to you to set yourself up for success. Yeah. So what other items that you think have, would you say that have, are they, you, people think that they have no sugar, but they really do. Like, I will tell you this, when I went to Starbucks, this was a couple of years ago. And I asked them, I said, is there sugar in your coconut milk? And they said, no. And I said, okay, can I see the box? And she said, okay. And she showed me the box and it was like "Hmm." eight grams of sugar. And I was like, I thought that this was no sugar added. And she was like, oh, that's very little. Like in her mind, eight grams of sugar is, I guess, basically nothing normal I know isn't that crazy you're like yeah and that's just and that's just in one beverage that's not talking you know speaking of all the unsweetened things that you know we're looking at so yogurts a lot of times um coffee creamers coffee creamers just because it's like no sugar added just because it says no sugar added doesn't mean that it doesn't still have sugar right so there's a lot of different things um I think there's a lot of hidden and I'm probably going down that rabbit hole a little bit too much, but like protein bars and, um, you know, granolas, things like that. They're, they're full of sugars. But I think one of the main things is really focusing on going back to those unsweetened like juices. Um, you look at everything from, uh, the cranberry to orange juices, to this, to that, um, again, plant-based milks, everything to make sure that you're just taking that time Take a couple seconds when you're at the grocery store, flip it over and look at the label. And even if you shop online in this day and age with what we're all going through, um, you know, a lot of us still being at home, we've gotten acclimated to using online shopping. You can click on the image. (laughs) There's no excuse. You can still click on the image and you can look through and scroll through that image to see if it'll show the nutrition label. Almost every single online shopping has that now. All right. So number one. So I want to keep this in the top is stop drinking sugar, sweetened beverages. Number two, stop drinking uh, the artificially sweetened beverages. Um, number three is to not buy unsweetened versions of food. I think I might have gotten our numbers wrong. <laughs> we, <laughs> well, it's okay. Hey, it's sugar. Yeah, let's. We're we're on the right path. <laughs> It's kicking like those artificial sugars um, and looking at the unsweetened, you know, making sure that those unsweetened are still um, no sugar. Well, let's talk about dried fruit, because I think that yeah. that's another one is to really beware of dried fruit, of yeah. how much sugar is in there. Right. How people can get out of control. Well, and it's, it's pretty crazy that, you know, when you dehydrate something and don't get me wrong, I love, I love dried fruit, but it has such a concentrated level of sugar because it takes all the moisture out. So what's left is that sugar, right? Um, It's not, but what ends up happening, and just like you said, people can get out of control of it because if you look, if you look at how much like a quarter cup is, (laughs) In your hand of what, you know, say raisins, for example. Oh my gosh. And just, I mean, I wish I had it in front of me, the amount of sugar that a quarter cup of raisins has. And we take handfuls of granola and just put it, just eating it, right? And most granolas have not only cranberries, you know, raisins, they have maple syrup, they have all sorts of things, but Dried fruit is one of the things that I do think creeps up on people that a lot of people don't use awareness of because they're like, okay, if I'm eating fruit, I'm doing something right. (laughs) But it can still have just massive amounts of unnecessary sugar in it. And a lot of them are, if you look at it, you can see the sugar. They're coated with sugar. (laughs) Um, Coated with sugar. (laughs) All right. Tip number five is to shop on a full stomach. So, Which, yes. Who has not gone to the grocery store and just been like, I'm going to have some of that, 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 myself included. And I come home and I'm like, oh 
my God, <laughs> what did I do? And who am I shopping for? <laughs> shopping for an army. It's one of the things because the point of having a full stomach means your blood sugar is stabilized. So you don't have as many cravings. Um, another tip is to chew on fennel seeds or some sort of nuts. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that of helping kind of calm your sugar cravings. Right. So when that happens, when you're, so especially say, for example, um, it's a good one. Uh, almonds, almonds are pretty, or walnuts, either one we'll use as an example. It's more along the lines of creating the satiety when you're chewing on something. So when you're chewing on something, your body says, okay, it's time to work. Metabolism start. It's time to digest. We're going to use this as energy. Um, but it's, I'm, I'm not really a fan of the keto diet, but I will use this as an absolute perfect example. When you are chewing on something that tends to be a little bit more high fat, it can almost completely calm those sugar cravings right away, almost right away. And like fennel seeds, things that have to do, especially herbs and spices, um, they're so great because they are known as a warming spice or a warming sensation. So when that happens, what the body literally says it's soothing. It actually helps to stabilize the blood sugar and, you know, perfect timing this time of year. Cinnamon is one of the best things you can put in everything instead of sweetener because it actually will calm all those um, cravings. It completely stabilizes your blood sugar. It's fantastic. Nutmeg, cinnamon, um, ginger, turmeric, of course, fennel, all of those that anise flavor, everything. It's, it's awesome. Well, and that brings us to number seven, which is to squash sugar cravings with tea. One yep. of the things that uh, Jen Van Horn always says is she says, I'll, I would be five to seven pounds heavier if I didn't have five cups of tea a day. And she says yeah. she literally has anywhere from four to five cups of tea with some of those things you're talking about, mint, ginger, cinnamon, chai. <laughs> and it, it is something really magical about having that cup of tea that just hits that sweet spot yeah. without that sugar overload. Exactly. It's, it goes back to we, the whole point of sugar. I mean, if you think about it is that it's almost like it's comforting. It makes you feel happy. Right. But if you're taking in something like a warm tea that has all these herbs and spices and different things that is supposed to that gives you that same feeling, you know, but again, just like you're saying with those teas and what Jen says, it's the same thing. If you don't have those, you know, that's one of my favorite things to do midday is either a green tea or um, a no sugar added chai tea, because in that chai tea is just loaded. It's loaded with all those really yummy warming spices that gives you that little soothing feeling that doesn't make you reach for a candy bar or for, you know, too much sugar or for another coffee full of sugar. Yep. Number eight, by plain flavors and sweeten naturally with fruit. Can you give some examples of that? So one of the great things that I love so much is, um, you know, a lot of times let's take something like yogurt, since we had already talked about that. People are like, oh, well, yogurt's good for you. And it absolutely is. But it's also watching the sugar content in that because yogurt's going to have naturally occurring sugar. Um, but if you look at that, it always has that, you know, fruit on the bottom and you think you're doing something good. Stop, stop stop reaching for that because you can add your own sugar and you can control how much fruit you're adding to it. So you're now in control of how much sugar you're taking in. Um, same thing with smoothies, you know, people it's, that's such a, I think you and I have had this discussion, even when I was on the podcast last talking about the green smoothie, right? Making sure that if you're doing a smoothie, especially a green smoothie, that's supposed to be helping you and giving you antioxidants and either as a snack or a meal replacement. But if you're putting in, you're like, okay, I'm going to put in mango and all these blueberries and all these great fruits. But then all of a sudden you're adding in that much more sugar. So making sure that knowing the balance between even though sugar is good for you, excuse me, that, uh, that fruit is good for you, knowing and controlling how much sugar that you're adding in. So really focusing on maybe that everything from a quarter cup no more than a quarter cup, literally at one setting, even an eighth a cup, right? Depending on what it is. 
Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. Yeah, and number nine would be get rid of marinara sauce and use fresh tomatoes and get rid of ketchup and use salsa. Yes. Talk about that. So all those condiments, I have a huge list um, prepared and ready because it'll kind of hurt your feelings and blow your mind on how many sugars are in all of these condiments. You're like, okay, I'm going to flavor my food. I'm going to do this right. And I'm going to have these zucchini noodles and I'm doing good. And then you dump all this marinara sauce on it, which you're still, let me, let me rephrase. You're still doing fantastic because you're moving in the right direction, having zucchini noodles and not having a ton of carbs, but you're still adding in all that because we all love sauce. Come on, let's be real. It's very difficult to be like, no, I'd really like light marinara unless you're having pizza, right? <laughs> when you have pasta, most people want it super saucy. And there's always just, it's there's just so much sugar in all of that. Um, mayonnaise and, you know, everybody's favorite, I hate to say it, but ranch, you know, hidden uh, Thousand Island, Italian dressings, all these dressings that it's just, it, it kind of is a little earth shattering when you think that you're doing something good for your body when you look at this and go, well, it says low fat, so I'm going to pick the right thing. And that's, again, going back to that um, artificial sugar as well, too, right? But using natural ingredients is always the way to go. Um, I love putting salsa on salad. People think it's weird, but it's, it's so good. <laughs> so you're basically making a, almost like a taco salad, right? And instead of using an actual salad dressing, and the great news is you're getting no sugar, and then you're also getting um, very little you know, excess fat in that as well, too. But let's bring up a valid point really quick with salsa. Same thing. Know your labels, making sure that you're flipping that over and giving yourself a few seconds to read that nutrition label of that salsa, because a lot of them, especially in a container, they're going to have sugar. They're going to have it. Well, and the thing is, is that two tablespoons of ketchup has over seven grams of sugar, while yeah. that two tablespoons of salsa has just one and a half grams. So, exactly. you know, burgers, getting right burgers, like my husband loves eggs with ketchup. I don't, I think it's disgusting, but <laughs> he's been switching lately. Sometimes he'll say, let me have salsa. So they yeah. taste just as good. If you have burger, put salsa instead of ketchup on it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And as far as the, the, the marinara goes, I mean, there's no need to add sugar to the tomato sauce because the fruits already naturally like has sweetness to it, but yeah. you actually can get them where you could, they say, no sugar added tomato Correct. basil, you know? Correct. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Or just buy fresh tomatoes, you know, or buy the canned tomatoes and add a little bit of, you know, olive oil and garlic and basil. Yeah. And, Taking you know, a few extra steps to set yourself up for success is always a plus. And people think that it takes so long, but honestly taking a can of, and, you know, maybe I'll do a video on this, you know, maybe that's a good step in the right direction to show, you know, maybe put a timer on <laughs> how long it takes from opening a can, putting in a blender, putting in basil, uh, putting in say a vinegar, lemon juice, something like that, and blending that all up. And then you've got your own marinara, right? So adding that in without any sugar. Any chef will say that you should be adding sugar to that, right? And I get it with that flavor balance. But at the same time, when it comes down to it, that adding no sugar is always going to be the way to go in my book. And then number 10 is going to be buy natural peanut butters and natural almond butters that don't have those added sugars. Yeah, some of them. I know when I say this term a lot will break your heart because it's true. Some of them have so much sugar added, so much sugar. Um, and a lot of them will sneak up on you because a lot of them now say no sugar, but they actually have about four, three to five grams usually of urethritol, <laughs> which is a sugar alcohol. And technically, and I might be wrong on this, so don't quote me, but I think the FDA actually doesn't look at it as registering as a sugar, I think. 
I know it has to be in the label, but they can actually say on the label, no sugar added or something like that. It's very sneaky, sneaky how they do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So going back to education, right? Going back to using that time to educate yourself to make sure you're making the right decisions. Using the knowledge, you know, it takes two seconds to flip over and look at a nutrition label, but knowing how to read it properly too. Yeah. And it's all about making substitutions. So like, have you ever tried a nitro cold brew coffee? You know, the crazy thing is I I have definitely gotten cold brew coffees before, but I've never had one of the, you mean the actual nitros like in the container, like even the ones that they have at like Whole Foods or different grocery stores, right? I've actually never had one of those. Yeah. So basically it's basically, they have a keg and they fill it with cold brew coffee Mm -hmm. and it's attached to a pressurized tap that infuses the brew with nitrogen gas okay and it makes the coffee bubble up and it gives it this kind of creamy chocolatey taste yeah it kind of is people say it kind of tastes like chocolate milk and it has like a little bit of a foam at the top but it it doesn't have any sugar so it's like if you find a place like you can say okay if I was someone who I, and I've cut coffee completely out of my diet now, oh, but, um, I'm still working on that. <laughs> if I have it, I'm going to say, okay, let me try a nitro tap. And if you have a lighter roast, the lighter, the beans, the less bitter, the brew. Right. And then, you know, if you wanted to add a little bit of monk fruit to that and try that to see how, you know, to kind of wean yourself Exactly. A place where you could just have, you know, black coffee. And really you could flavor your coffee with ingredients besides sugar. One of my favorite things to do with coffee is going back to that chai tea that I love to drink is steep the chai tea bag in your coffee. Mm. Ta-da, flavor. So that way it's basically like an unsweetened chai tea latte. Yeah. and Making sure that you got no sugar in that that creamer though. (laughs) Yeah. And again, if you're going to do a transition, you could use like cocoa powder or vanilla powder yeah. in an unsweetened latte, you know, yeah. like, you know, instead of the table sugar. And you can also just start with doing like heavy whipping cream. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, the good news is right now and where we are with all the products and and the gadgets and everything out there, you know, there's, we have so many options and so many fan fantastic substitutes for not eating sugar, right? We have, um, you know, there's so many great options now. And what I mean by gadgets too, is going back to like, even, you know, the whipped coffees that everybody was doing. Now I know that had a lot of, um, a lot of sugar in it, but I mean, you can blend coffee, right? You can put it in the blender. I've seen people do that, blend it up. And then that way it kind of makes it frothy. Take a little immersion blender, do it that way. You know, there's different ways that you can, flavor things and be able to have fun with it. It's not about focusing on what you can't have, right? I think that's the main thing to get out of everybody's heads. Let's not focus on, I can't have sugar. I can't have this. I can't have that. That's a, that's a state of deprivation. Put yourself in a mental capacity where you're like, look at everything that I can have. Look at all the amazing things that I can now have that are going to better my overall well-being and health in the long run. I'm literally curing myself of a potential disease, a potential addiction. <laughs> so the place we are, you know, and, and everything's so easy. You can basically purchase almost anything at the click of a button, right? And there's so many options out there that are really great. And making sure, and again, going back to, I know I'm rambling now, making sure everybody gets that in their head. Like, don't think about what you can't have. Let's focus on what you can have because this is about what you can do. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about making alterations when ordering out. So one of the things that my friends always give me a hard time about is because they're like, God, you and your special request, (laughs) you know, it's like, you have to say, like, when I have a smoothie, I'm like, I want my smoothie without agave, you know, because a lot of, even the smoothie places, they have honey or agave, you know, I might say, you know, I want my chicken, if I had like a chicken marinara, I'd have the marinara on the side. Um, I might say, you know, a little bit of this little, you know, dressing on the side. But the thing is, is that you have to say, my health is more important 
than me being embarrassed that I'm making all these, you know, special right. requests. Absolutely. Don't, don't be ashamed to stand up for what you believe and what you want. Um, and, you know, going back to that too, setting yourself up for success. A lot of restaurants already have their menus online, right? So looking, taking a couple seconds to look at that menu before you get to that restaurant to go ahead and get in your head. Okay. I know that, um, and you know, I've actually pulled, um, a server aside ahead of time and said, look, I don't want to be a pain, but I just want to let you know that I want to, I want to know if I can eliminate this, this, and this. I don't want to be a pain. I want to tell you this in private. I'm just not trying to take up too much of your time, but I also want to make sure that I'm getting exactly what I want in my meal. And if you address them in a positive way and say, you know, ahead of time, like, Hey, I have some, um, some options that I would like to, you know, some, you know, things I'd like to take away and maybe add, is that a possibility? Most of the time a restaurant is going to oblige. They're going to do whatever it takes for customer service. And a lot of times I tell people, you know, the one thing that people forget to look at at the bottom of the menu is that a la carte, right? Those a la carte items are just veggies. A lot of times you can just order those veggies as sides. You know, I know that's not as, you know, or you can substitute one of those for something that's instead of, you know, if you really want to get strict and say um, no grains and your entree comes with rice, then you can substitute that for broccoli or for spinach instead. So let's say that you have a sweet tooth. <clears throat> what is, and you, are, but first of all, I want to say you make the best salad dressings and I'm hoping that maybe, you know, today or tomorrow you can post in our Facebook group, a couple of your salad dressing recipes. That My favorite. Yeah. Have some of that. Cause she, I'm telling you, she's got some really great salad dressings, but let's talk about some of like a healthy dessert. That's literally, you know, maybe five grams of sugar or less that you make that when you have a sweet tooth, you're saying, okay, I'm going to have this, but it's not going to drive my insulin levels to go crazy. Um, one of the main things that I usually stick to is I make these, I call them, I call them cheater chocolates <laughs> because they're, um, and they're, they're, it's not sugar-free, but when I'm absolutely 100% not in this challenge, of course, but definitely having a hankering for something. And my husband loves them too. So I definitely tend to keep them around. I make this, I call it cheater chocolate because I take enjoy life chocolate chips. They are, um, the whole, you know, the grain free, they're, um, soy free, not that it has to be vegan, but they're vegan and they don't have a ton of sugar, which I love. So I will melt those down with a little bit of coconut oil, tons of cinnamon, tons of cardamom. And basically that's it. And I will freeze that and make little pieces of chocolate bark and break them up into little tiny pieces. And it's just that perfect little amount. And it's not, you know, and I also make an avocado chocolate pudding, which is to die for, but it doesn't have to have a ton of sugar either because I either use dates or I use a little bit of say maple syrup and a little bit of that goes a long way. Um, and you just have a little bit, you know, that's the thing that we also forget too, when it comes to sugar, we tend to, instead of taking one little bite and walking away and allowing that to satisfy us, because it will, we end up going, that's good. And just eating, 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 <laughs> eating more of it and more of it and more of it. Right. Cause it tastes good and it feels good, but knowing, you know, that's one thing that I tell people a lot of times I'm like, take a bite walk away, get it out of your sight, go in another room, go and watch TV, start folding clothes, do whatever it takes. Get yourself away from the refrigerator mm -hmm. and see if you're truly still craving it 20 minutes later, because I guarantee you won't be. Well, we have some exciting news. We're going to be doing a 30 day sugar detox. And so we're going to have three levels. So Jocelyn, we have another co-host that's going to be with us uh, for this sugar detox, which is David Wolf. And he specializes in people who are addicted to sugar. So talk about our three level plan and how the detox works, Jocelyn. Yeah, I'm super excited to be working with David. He, he is extremely educated. So it's fantastic to be able to bring him on with this. So the good news is we actually have three levels because the purpose is again, let's be real. Yes, we understand. We also know what days we're going into this also, you guys. <laughs> we know this is around Halloween. This is why it's a challenge. Um, the main purpose is to set you up, for, uh, set you up for success. So it's healthy habits, 
and still being a challenge. So you can kind of teeter, I guess you could almost say within these levels, but the ultimate goal is to reach level one. So I'm actually going to start, I'm going to start backwards and start with level three. You're level three, um, because as Chantal um, had told me earlier <laughs> that, you know, getting in and talking to a few other people, we we do understand that, you know, that glass of wine needs to happen every once in a while. So level three is going to be one cup of fruit, one cup of grains, and two glasses of wine or two cocktails. But let me get that straight. That alcohol is per week not per day, <laughs> per week. <laughs> the cup of fruit or cup of grains is actually going to be daily if needed. Um, level two is going to be a half a cup of fruit and, half of, and a half a cup of grains. One glass of wine or cocktail, again, per week. <laughs> level one is going to be your ultimate goal, which is no sugar, no fruit, and no grains. So think... Um, think that whole 30 concept, right? But even a little bit stricter than that. So I know whole 30 was a big, you know, in keto, that's a big deal. That's all over the place. And, you know, there's a lot, a lot of great access to that. So we're going to be discussing a lot of different points and setting everybody up for success with everything from, and Chantel, you know, please feel free to jump in, but I know we're going to be doing different things like recipes and, everything from, you know, different websites or products or things that allow people to know that we are here to set you up for success within this challenge. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is gonna really take you to the next level. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to this recent review, a happy coaching client sent in. Thanks so much for your help and guidance. I never could have done it without you. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day, over and over and over again, and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Well, it's really also about accountability. And that's Correct. really a, a lot of people know a lot of this now knowledge, but they don't have the accountability. And we're going to be there to hold you accountable in this private Facebook group. So um, we're going to have the link in the show notes. And so we just want to encourage you to go there. It's if you go to ChantelRayWay.com slash kick sugar, all the information will be on that page. And we'll also add that into the show notes, but we hope that you guys will take that, you know, for a minute and just really say it's $30. It's a dollar a day. This is a no brainer. Like every person listening, if you can't go 30 days without any sugar, that's a that there's an addiction going on there. You right. you don't want to get yourself to that. And I want to tell you, you know, one thing that I realized is I want to tell you guys 10 foods that have more sugar than a donut. And so if you, I, I didn't realize this, but a Krispy Kreme glazed donuts only has 10 grams of sugar. I so didn't know you, that. <laughs> yeah, it's just 10 grams of sugar. And so if you think about it, you know, there's, you know, like the kind bar, most of those kind bars have about 16 grams of sugar. So you're now having instead of this kind bar that has 16 grams of sugar. And then there's this donut here that only has 10. Now, am I saying have the donut instead of the kind bar? I'm just saying, listen, that's 16 grams of sugar in that kind bar. Um, If you look at the almond milk by Almond Breeze, the almond, um, one cup of that um, has 13 grams of sugar. So again, one cup of vanilla flavored almond milk has more than a Krispy Kreme Krispy donut. Cream donut. The, the <laughs> Greek non-fat yogurt, you're thinking the vanilla non-fat yogurt, that has 20 grams of sugar. What does a donut have? 10. Uh, a vinaigrette dressing, like Ken's Steakhouse vinaigrette dressing has 12 grams of sugar for two tablespoons. Again, 
that's more than 10 grams of the yeah. um the donut i mean it's just crazy there's um like the frozen foods there's like this sweet and sour chicken um it has 22 grams of sugar again versus 10 grams of the donut and even this will blow your mind a little container of the Mott's applesauce has 22 grams of sugar versus 10 grams on the donut. And then the, uh, another big one is half a cup of ragu sauce, right? Half a cup has 12 grams of sugar. So I just want to kind of really encourage you guys to start really looking at every little thing you're eating. Another big one is, um, you know, honey barbecue sauce. My husband loves uh, grilled chicken. Oh yeah. With barbecue sauce. Teriyaki barbecue. Yeah, and you're thinking Ugh. honey barbecue. That sounds like, you know. Yum, ribs. Yes. Yeah. But guess all. what? So the yummy. first ingredient, even though it says honey barbecue, the first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup, number one. And number two, two tablespoons now you know you're putting more than two tablespoons on that honey barbecue chicken we all like it 15 coffee. <laughs> grams of sugar how many again sorry i interrupted you 15 grams yeah it's it's insane how much is it's in our food so it's really about raising awareness and again like i said making sure that the challenge is there to set people up for success with the like-minded individuals to you know for us to hold you accountable but to be in that sense of community that you're all in this together and that you can do it but really so much of this is in you know what we're already saying what Chantel's saying is an education thing going we're, we're about to blow your minds <laughs> on what you're really putting in your body every single day and that's this sure. group one of the challenges we're going to do is have you post different things into this private group so like my husband i hate to be picking on him he loves these white macadamia cliff bars okay they're like this big you know they've got um, protein, you know, I think like nine grams of protein. The one that he likes has 25 grams of sugar. He eats like two, sometimes three a day. That's on top of that coffee that he's eating, 25 grams of sugar. That's like him eating. And he, in his mind, he's thinking, oh, I'm really doing good. I'm having this quote, organic because they, they say they're oh, yeah. with organic oats, right? So mm -hmm. he's having this organic cliff bar that has protein in it. In his mind, he's like, okay, but he's having 25 grams of sugar. How many, and think about how many, let's, and my, I'll, I'll admit math is not my thing, numbers aren't my thing, but let's think about, and not trying to pick on him, but that perfect example, what you're saying with the donuts. How many, so how many sugars do you have? You can add two, two and a half, two and a half Krispy Kremes because there's 10 in each. Yeah. So it's like, you could either have two and a half Krispy Kremes or you could have one of your organic Cliff Bars here. And yeah, and don't take that. Yeah, and I don't want anybody to think like, oh, well then perfect. I'd love to, I'd much rather have the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> the, but again, the purpose that we're getting to is raising the awareness on the hidden sugars that are in everything, you know, and making sure that knowing, like Chantel said, that, you possibly, we have, you know, we have a serious, forget the pandemic that's going on or that we had or still dealing with. There's a sugar pandemic. There is a serious addiction in this world because everything is literally just laced with sugar and it's doing zero for your physical health, your mental health, for your body, for your organs. Give your body a rest. You want your, you know, your body is supposed to be detoxing every day, but when you're pumping your body full of sugar every day, it's not going to be able to detox. Your liver can't do its job. Your body, you're, you're literally wrecking. And I, like I said, I don't want to be too intense, but you're literally wrecking your body on how it's supposed to be beautifully working, you know, and repairing yourself every single day. Well, and it was funny because we were at a friend's house and they had donuts there and then they had apples with Nutella mm -hmm. and Nutella, two tablespoons have 21 grams of sugar. So I, I the kid said, can I have a donut? And the mom said, no, but you can have apples with Nutella. Well, 
he had way more than two tablespoons of Nutella. So now he basically probably had like three tablespoons of Nutella because he was like, if I can have, yeah, exactly. He could have had one donut. One donut was only 10 grams of sugar. Meanwhile, he had probably 30 grams of sugar with those three tables, you know. Yeah, because he was because he was told it was okay. And he's just going to be like, perfect. I'm going to slap it on because you know what? Because the body says it's good. It tastes good. The taste buds say yummy. Want more. And your brain says, gimme, gimme, gimme. Right. Those are those little neurotransmitters. So it is possible to retrain your brain and to retrain your taste buds to not have that sugar addiction. It's absolutely possible. All right. Well, we would really want you to go. Don't forget that is chantelrayway.com slash kick sugar. We'll put that in the show notes. Again, that's going to be with me, Jocelyn and David Wolf. It's going to be an amazing experience. I hope that you join us. Jocelyn, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Uh, The best place is going to be at Jocelyn Level Lifestyle or at level.lifestyle on Instagram. Um, That's I'm probably more prominent on there. I post tons of recipes, tons of tips. And, you know, guys, make sure and do yourself a favor and really think about, you know, do this challenge. It's worth it. It's worth it to you. It's worth it for your family. It's worth it to raise awareness for your coworkers. You know, get some get some accountability accountability partners to join in with you. You're going. To, you're about to go into the holidays. <laughs> just yeah, that's just a great idea. <laughs> Don't do it just by yourself. Pick Don't up yeah. two friends to do it with you, and we'd love to see you on there. Yeah, and that's awesome. You guys stay tuned. We'll have another episode coming up. And Jocelyn, you'll go in the group this week and post a couple of those recipes. Um, Great recipes. For some some salad dressings and some desserts, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. Stay Bye, tuned everybody. Episode. Bye-bye for now. This has been a Sompronto Media production. 